Welcome to our third video on our sequence on international macroeconomics. The objective of this video is to introduce small open economy models. What we want to do is to define what it means for an economy to be open in terms of the modeling assumptions, what it means for it to be small, and then finally to introduce the three types of models that we're going to use moving forward as we finish the topic in the slides. So let's get into it. The first question we have is, what makes an economy open? Well, two things. The first one is there's going to be flow of goods and services between the economy we are modeling and the rest of the world. This comes in two different flavors. The first one is exporting. So there is an additional outlet for domestic firms to sell goods and services. Now, the converse of this is importing which basically expands the variety and the amount of goods and services that local consumers can purchase. Now, this flow of goods and services has a counterpart, the flow of funds across countries. And when we talk about this flow of funds, we're thinking about the possibility of a country to save in other countries. This includes purchasing assets, uh, owning firms, or just lending to agents or other countries. Now, again, the converse of this is going to be the fact that the country can now borrow from other countries. Okay, taken together, these two characteristics are going to make an economy open. And it's very important to understand that these characteristics are always linked. You cannot have flow of goods without having also flow of funds. So an open economy is going to have flow of goods, trade, and funds between the economy and the rest of the world. The next question we have is what makes an economy small? So when we think of open economies being small, we're thinking about the fact that they cannot affect international prices. Effectively, we think of small open economies as international price takers. Just as before, being international price takers affects two different scenarios. The first one is the trade of goods. So some countries are too small to affect the price of the goods they are selling. One example is oil. Some countries cannot affect the international price of oil, like Canada, while some other countries are big for that market, like Saudi Arabia. As we saw uh, last week, when Saudi Arabia increased the amount of oil they produce, offered discounts on the price of oil they were offering, slashing international oil prices. Now, this also happens in many other markets. For instance, Coffee planters in Colombia cannot affect coffee prices, but other markets, say like Brazilian, uh, the Brazilian coffee market, these markets are large enough that when something happens to them, like having bad weather, this can have effects on international coffee prices. The second sense in which small pen economies are international price takers is with respect to the flow of funds across countries. This is borrowing across countries. And this is going to be particularly important. It's actually what makes small open economies different from the point of view of the models that we're going to lay out in the future. Now, what this means is that a small open economies take as given the interest rate. It is not fixed inside the country. They have an interest rate fixed by the international markets. So if a country tries to lower the interest rate below the international interest rate, all savers could go abroad where they can have a higher return. And conversely, if they try to increase it a lot, all borrowers can also go abroad where they have a lower cost. So now we know what it means for an economy to be open and for an economy to be small. What we're going to do going forward is we want to develop a small open economy model that uses the tools we already have, the tools we've been building in previous chapters, in order to study what are the effects of different shocks in this economy. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on an endowment economy. This is an, an economy without production. This is going to let us see how consumption and savings determine the current account. Now, this is linking to the previous video where we talked about how the savings decision really influences the current account and does the flow of trade between the country and the rest of the world. And just a mild spoiler, this is going to look exactly like the model developed in Chapter 9, the two-period consumption saving model, but with fixed interest rates. Then we're going to use this model, this endowment economy, to think about debt and default in countries. 
So when we think that countries can default on debt, that's going to, of course, have some consequences. The point of this uh, section is going to be to think, what are those consequences with regards to the ability of a country to trade with the rest of the world? Then finally, we're going to move to a production economy. We're going to introduce production in the economy, and we're going to ask, how does the open economy react to different shocks? And again, a mild spoiler, this is going to look exactly like the model in Chapter 11, the production economy with two periods, but it's going to have a fixed interest rate. And we're going to discuss that later on in future videos. Okay, so with that, we finish this video. In our next video, we're going to talk about the endowment, the small open economy model.